Let's just start in Lumino. Boom. On we go. Hello. Salut. Hello, everyone. How you doing, Rebek? All good, all good, all good. We are pleased to find you again for this quick live, for this small live. It's small because we don't have many big topics to discuss with you. So what we've done is we've taken the sofas because we needed to sit down and discuss everything that we had to prepare for you. Today, we're not on our own. We're accompanied by two game designers that are part of the team that I will present to you if you want. Hello, everyone. I'm Crocus, game designer responsible um, specifically for balancing items and all sorts of other things a lot of things that that we break your head with on a Monday morning for and next to you is Etsy uh, game designer also work on balancing whether it be items monsters classes lots of topics at the moment you're working on isn't it <laughs> you've noted it but we have, uh, in, during the beta, we've reworked a lot of classes, but it feels like there's items and shields that we've mentioned a long time and that is finally arriving. So, without any hesitation, we can switch to our presentation mode. I, I have to warn you, the live will be dense, there'll be a lot of information, uh, and I wanted to go back on a first initial information. Right? The game is still arriving on the 3rd of December. We've announced that last week. We are still on this very deadline, 3rd of December. I'll re-say it again for those of you who missed it in the past, who missed it because of whatever reason. The adventure is coming. It's happening very soon. We're so hyped for it. We're so excited for it to be happening. Um, already seeing chat in chat the comments, somebody in chat in the comment, they're saying we don't want to be on a very lengthy live, we have loads of topics to um, uh, go over, and our Q&A will be very short compared to previous ones because it's so dense and we don't want to stay here for six hours answering questions. So as Papino said, we will mention the three big topics that are coming up and focus on those. So while AT is with us, we want to go back on the modifications that are arriving very soon on the beta, on the 7th of November, which are uh, very much centered around balancing in the game. On the very first part, we have the shields, revision, rework of characteristics, and surprise new shields! What? What? Other people are gonna get excited by that. The second part will be the resources, um, uh, achievements, the number of resources uh, necessary for the crafts, and also some modifications on pretty much every single key to dungeons in the game. I don't want to say in time entirely all of them but I think we are pretty much on 90% plus most of them will be reviewed uh, and then and this is the the part that interests a lot of players sets items the sets the more we worked on this on the team the more we have um, supplemented our catalog of what is available because we haven't touched it really for ages um, the need for this change in particular was more seen, felt, compared to the shield reworks. And it would have been remiss for us not to make that happen before Unity release to benefit a maximum number of players that will start fresh from these changes, which will be amazing. And the last one, the client. It will arrive in two days, and it's the end of the game stats and the debug of uh, GPS, all the problems that we have. We've announced that we'll have the characteristic tab as well that we will go into rework, but we have a little bit of a delay on that one and we won't be able to have it. Uh, ready, sadly, but we were still working on it and it will arrive in shortly. We won't get too much into the detail of the modifications that will happen. We will invite you to go to the client starting from the 7th of November and you will get the actual details like stats of monsters and things like that. You will be able to see those things. Um, class change will be finally activated on the beta on the 7th, but here we have loads of things to present. We don't want to get into too much detail so we don't spend hours and hours here, but we prefer to go back on the details of the balancing <laughs> that we have been announcing for three months you've been requesting it for three months because some people are planning a rush so these notions can change a lot to the way you will behave and decide make decisions right we've talked about it during the live of the 7th of October where we've gathered a lot of data on the uses of items during the first phase of the battle right 
It has been equally important for us to not denature the experience during the first phase so that it's not influenced by some criteria, arbitrary criteria. We want to see how you progress and things like that. So part of the modifications and part of our reflections on this have come from the data we've gathered in the phase one. So to go back on the shields, uh, can you present to us the reflection that you had behind? Because there's one element that will make everybody react so much. <laughs> so let's get it out of the way. <laughs> Go on, share, share your uh, reflection with us. Globally, this is Kroku speaking, globally, the big point of this rework will be the removal of the percentage damage. Because shields, since seven years now, have been things that have changed the meta the most in the office, whether it be PvP or PvM. And it's the one singular item that made power creep rampant on everything. 15% on one item just made everybody much stronger all at once. And also, it limits the gaming distance and uh, close combat. We find that sad, we find it a bit pathetic that it has limited in that one. So the theory crafting, the way you play classes has been stifled by shields in particular. And we wanted to change this. We wanted, in this logic right here of balancing things, propose diversity uh, by removing the power creep at the same time. So variety of builds, variety of gameplays. So in order to affect these changes, while keeping that, uh, removing the damages was a way for us to open these possibilities and make them all available. Right, it's true, we were rather limited to about 10 shields, we can't say 10, but there were only about a few that were used, either during progressing phase, it was like 2 or 3, like uh, uh, the level 1-1, one, one, you put an AP on it and then you never remove it, that's it, PVM sorted with 1, and then the next time you change it is 4 leaf and the tank panda shield. That's it. That's pretty much it. So, uh, we, we didn't use them as much as we wanted. Power creep was brought about by one singular item. It limited the theory craft aspect, the building, which was a bit sad. And it also incites people to incite people to play around damage rather than mix and match a little bit of tank, a little bit of damage. Uh, what about some positioning and long range damage? We, we And on top of that, we had this uh, perverse effect of uh, bonus and malice where really it forces you to either play one way or another because you can't really use the malice affects you so much that you can't ignore it and play around it and also reduce damage overall but we will be reassuring to you guys so don't think we have brought we have worked with the notion of balancing so we will we've changed pretty much all of them and we have brought some new things we didn't want to nerf everything we wanted to get rid of that percentage which scaled all sorts of damage upwards and especially some ones that were out of this world uh, like crit plus percentage damage was nuts in PVM and they're seeing in chat they're talking about stats and things like that but while he's still talking let's see examples of the new stats of these items so first example <laughs> he got lost so damage scaling the idea was to go through all modifications items shields as we will see later on to try and get back some of those damages but in a sort of balanced way on the entire theory craft rather than get all of it from one item now you will have bits from different items and try and get your lost item but in a different way it will not one slot that is so important above everything else but it will become a normal regular object that is part of sets classical items and it will and that's it and that's pretty much it this it will open new ideas for theory crafts and things like that <laughs> we're seeing wisdom on the shield right here is making lots of reactions in the comments the other thing is we wanted to more seamlessly restructure stats how did how did we go ahead so the idea was to make items that look like others, but not necessarily overpowered, because it is a slot of equipment that is accessible like every other. And make them defensive items more than they were previously, because that's the idea 
of shields, right? So it was the, the one item that would serve to protect you and shield you was the most offensive of all your items in your entire inventory. So we tried, we went on some more traditional stats, uh, strength, wisdom, vitality. Uh, uh, we went on some annex uh, stats like uh, uh, reduction, AP, MP reduction, like they used to before, except we won't have fixed damage, maybe with some exceptions, because we think there's plenty on all the other items in your items, so we don't really need to have them. So these are examples that you know here. These are retroactive, so every existing shield in the existence will have correct stats while keeping with the rules would have commensurate with everything that you have so if you've been there during the legendary item revamp same thing will happen so uh, just a quick one you will have a in the change log of the 7th of december you will have a list of every single change before after and we'll use the same tools that we've done for the legendary items so it's kind of the same logic conversion transformation of stats uh, from line to line there will be key lines that will affect the new stats you get so we will explain the system again if you have eggs if you have uh, things like that, except if they are already uh, on stats that we've, we've added. If you had uh, a strength exo and we added strength, that will change. But generally speaking, your exos, AP, MP, range, things like that will are very likely to stay. So we will not indicate which line will go to which line to not cause more speculation than there already is. But rest assured, rest assured, your items will be converted during the update. So we've showed this. We we have new items that are coming, some new shields. So the three one, we have about 15 new shields that are coming and generally speaking, new visuals, um, new uh, new, what, what was that? They've, they've brought some items they had in the closet for a while, they've brought them out for. Uh, they've gapped some holes in the leveling, so compared to other objects, they found that they were too spaced compared to traditional items. So now you have all elements and shields, all specialties, uh, all reductions, so uh, they can... You will notice that you have more generalistic uh, shields that offer general stats that can be used in pretty much most situations, and also um, more specialized one for specific builds and things like that. And we've gapped some holes in the leveling, so 30, 35, 200. And uh, for the profession itself, it will have more tools to level. You have more options to uh, sort of level up. And here you can see perf stats, by the way. These stats that you see here are perf stats. And uh, Meijin will still be possible. Everything will stay the same. And we will give you back your transcendence rune. Let's go! My gamble paid off. So every sort of um, uh, spell percentage, things like that, they will stay in the game. They're not going anywhere. They're staying on your items. But we reserve the right to um, uh, make crafts. If, if the generation of these runes is not sufficient and we notice that this is the case, we will make it so that you have new... Um, the runes will still be possible, you will still be able to br uh, crush and still get them, but we will limit this 15% line per item, it's crazy. If you want to get that, you will have to innovate and it will cost you a lot more to achieve that level of power creep, but this is all in the spirit of balancing. I want to add one precision. On the two shields right here, the gobble shield, and the royal master, royal gobble, royal gobble is not in this set because it completes, the other two sets are complete. And the gobble one gives only intel because the cape only gives strength. So every time we take existing items, we look at the set whether they're part of it or not, we look at the stats, we pay attention to the set combination because some will be overpowered because of this. We will see, we, we have kept a very good eye on these things and uh, did our best to keep it balanced. Another word on the shield design, you can see we've added a lot of vitality on pretty much all of them, with a few exceptions, so that is a really good addition in tankiness for everyone, also resistances, um, as, as you can see there are specialized resistances like crit res, uh, 
defensive. Push back like uh, the Royal Master or the traditional one, 8% strength and air, for example. So you can see the stats are not, are not rubbish. You get some pretty decent, like uh, the new one, the uh, level 200 one that you can see there. 250 vit, 70 strength and RG, 40 wisdom, 12 uh, lock, uh, crit res, um, MP and AP parry, proper resistances, but you also get some maluses that are not to do with your actual damage. So we've gotten a lot of things from the equation for security, but we've kept some items, uh, we've kept shields as defensive items. We will not show you all the shields because you will get a dev vlog, a massive dev vlog where you get to read everything, discover everything. So now we just wanted to give you a few examples so you can see the logic that we've applied game design wise. I will not go over every single item because pretty much every single shield has changed. Another big topic that we will talk about new shields that will integrate um, sets why have we modified all of this right before <coughs> The question that he's been asked is, uh, why have you done this now? The idea is, uh, we wanted the Unity server rush to be in optimal condition. That's why we've tested everything in phase one. Uh, and let's talk about uh, sets, for example. For high level items balancing, it was to finish a job that we've started because um, it was globally a big success, the revamp of uh, set bonuses, 270. It allowed more theory crafting, uh, it reignited the economy around some items, loads of speculation, I remember. Uh, it, it, it really brought a dynamism to the game. It made some items more viable that weren't before. You have more combinations than before. You have access to AP, MP much easier, which are really cool things, which we really like. However, there were some items, some sets that were lagging behind. Some were incredibly strong, some were incredibly behind. So, uh, most sets, generally speaking, 70% of them have seen an up, whereas 30% of them have seen a minute nerf just to bring everything to balance. So the idea was to test our format of set bonuses and see, because it works already well in level 200 with max power and things like that. So we've used this sort of format and brought it down to low level uh, progression and it gives us a clean model. So you can see here, one AP, um, uh, two, the minor Tauror, the Tauror one, was completely revisited, and the minor Tot as well was lagging a bit behind for a really long time, so we've revitalized it. So, 20 years later, we have finally we reopened the folder with that set and re looked at it. Uh, the uh, set was uh, Chance, Intel, and MP Reduction. Um, but it also nerfed the the user of the actual thing. It was very niche, but it will be it will find its place. We're sure somewhere um, in some sort of tank, long range uh, MP reduction set. So there's 70 new uh, set bonuses, right? These are low levels low level items so two three levels that already we didn't create 17 new sets from scratch these are sets that did not have uh, these were items that did not have sets that now are part of new sets so uh We've reviewed uh, uh, weapons, set bonuses, set um, uh, what are they called? The um, uh, the uh, the rules to be able to use them. Like the, I can't remember the, the word. Uh, I think this is a topic that will make you react more. The conditions, yeah, it's the AP MP conditions as well uh, that have been added to a lot of items. This was a reflection that we've seen on the very first first beta phase because we've seen your behavior. We have the data now to back it, that the Tofu Cape, for example, you keep it until level 150. Yeah, that's not fun. We don't want you be doing, to be doing that. So, and that was the case for most AP, MP items. While we didn't have a conversion uh, at the level you're at, you did not change and you just kept the low level item because it gave you the stat that you want. So this is one of the main reasons that for low level items, you have more repetition of AP, MP in the set bonuses. So you have more access to AP, more access to MP, more all 
objects that have AP and MP whoa, to incite you to make more uh, exotic builds. You don't want the Toady, Matovu Cape, and that's it, you're done. And then at level 120, you start changing to the other predefined set. God. So we didn't nerf the items in themselves, but we have changed the conditions and sort of enhanced the offering everywhere else to bring everything up. So the overpowered items that you have always been using will still be there. They are very likely to stay meta, but you are you have the option now to adapt your theory crafting with the new restrictions, new set bonuses, new this, and we've made sure that they're not horrible in themselves to allow you more creativity and more options in combining and making new sets. So theory crafting is going to go crazy. So yeah. Generally speaking, you are uh, you have an easier tra time going to fetch that extra AP, extra MP with set bonuses and things like that. Um, yeah, so you either look for items that give you that, or you can try and combine sets, try and get those extra bonuses and try and find. Another problem that we had in phase one, because there were some items that were overrepresented, everybody wanted them, and it created a problem with farming the zones. It created a rivalry, you can find a single tofu in the area, for example and we hope that that alleviates the weight on that one area and it will allow players to scatter around and explore more things one word on the gelano we've hesitated it is an iconic item it is used in some level 200 sets and everything it's a lot more sensitive as an item compared to tofufu for example but gelano is an iconic item. the statue that it has is incredibly great it will be the only exception that we will keep there we don't know. We might change our mind in six months, but it will stay the way it is. <laughs> about uh, we've talked about shield rework. We didn't talk about weapons. It's uh, the modifications that we've done on shields will revalorize, add more value to weapons. It will add. It will um, add more value to weapons that have AOE now, right? So lances, uh, staffs, uh, hammers that have an AOE. These will have more value. And we've looked over the condition for um, equipping stuff so that more there's more leeway. And we removed conditions over items from level 1 to 150 completely removed because it didn't make sense to give you any restriction at that level why should why should uh yeah why should the, uh, an item that gives you intel and hit strength require in the conditions some chance for you to equip it what the other that makes sense. so uh, we didn't want to keep these restrictions at low level and force you to theory craft too much um, we've reduced some ap costs for example for things like that um yeah so generally the loss of damage that you get with shields the power creep that is gone can now go back or maybe you can compensate that with more aoe weapon damage so this is the gameplay we want we are hoping that the golden era does not come back the way it was where everybody was just using weapons but i think we found some sort of middle way and i think roxin using weapons is coming back <laughs> one last word on conditions it could very well easily be adapted uh, for gelano for example on top of adding uh, conditions for items that give you AP or not. We either put conditions or don't put anything at all. For example, we don't put silly conditions that don't make sense anymore. But the Gelano will be the only exception where you have... <laughs> He's making a joke about the riots if we touch the Gelano. <laughs> uh, aside from all of these items that are quite low level, in high level uh, areas, we have made the choice to propose uh, options. You either have 12 AP or 5 MP. So this, you will see this a lot more available. And so you will uh, use some items that were so strong in the past that were completely supplanted. They became redundant because of the recent uh, set of new items. So we're thinking of items specifically like uh, Capology, for example, the uh, 1001, uh, the yellow 1 MP one. All these items that had 1 MP, 1 AP of Amulet will allow you to, you to play either 12 or 5 to open uh, to open theory crafting and relax the trophy slots as well and it will 
open more condition more, more more planning in the game generally speaking so the list as i've said will be communicated on the 7th fully there were some modifications on legendary items there was one nerf in one line and everything else is an up <laughs> Bah! Bah! Speculate on the nerf. God damn, he just dropped that and then he was like, you do with that what you will. He's not gonna give us any details. No! 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 It's a reasonable nerf, he says. It's not gonna be too. Everybody in chat is saying Ganymed and Brumare as well. God damn, right. Trophies. We've done a rework where there will be new type of trophies that appear at level 150. Right, I think there's six, maybe eight that will appear. And as you've guessed, the last sentence here, the characteristics that were, um, oh, a new set of trophies that sort of replace what we've lost with items. So you have, uh, spell damage. <laughs> what? Now with trophies, you have to make choices because they weren't used as much but now you either have set bonuses and the power creep from them like spell damage or you have your sets but you have to make really good choices at the level of your uh, items your sets so we've added eight six new trophies that you can see here these are painful choices but you will have to make them and that's what we want <laughs> And their value generally will not be as high as um, as um, they're talking about plus 15 minus 15. Ooh, I don't know what that means. Plus 15 minus 15. Right. They're trying to balance this so that you are making tough choices. And this answers what we've said earlier about June rune generation. You will still be able to generate the percentage via trophies, even though we suspect via trophies, it will be slightly less if everybody if they become popular and everybody uses them then we'll be fine but we will be vigilant we'll keep an eye on the generation whether the generation of percentage runes from trophies is enough for you to be able to major and everything or not but we will see we will see we'll keep an eye on it um and we might go back on it either between now and the 3rd of december uh before the release otherwise the very first few months of um uh, release we'll see how it works essentially yeah we remain open to change and here we've done uh, trophies with without conditions bonus malice this is it to open um, the generation of uh, uh, more variation and uh, play around the conditions from other items but we see here all the c6 here that give you different stats yeah, so you get spell damage, but you lose resistances. You get resistance to range, but you lose damages. Again, a lot of people are reacted when they see the word Dofus. What is happening on our eggs? What is happening to the eggs? No, what's happening? Right, we allowed ourselves to revalorize, to bring value to some of them that were not forgotten, but not played as much that weren't played at all uh, the uh, so for example the clouded office we add oh so we add an effect with heals so the high cloudy in damage is low heals and the low damage is high heals so you can alternate between damage and heals the ebony has a new passive a supplementary passive <laughs> what what on top of everything that it has right now it will if you hit in melee you get long range distance uh long range damage if you hit distance you buff your close combat melee damage what <laughs> what? <laughs> that is insane. So it forces you, it plays around the alternance of damage. Just like you use it now, you hit from range, then you hit distance to place it. But this is one of the Dofuses that cost very little, whereas it was so hard to obtain. It was neglected, it was hard to obtain, um, and the scaling of damages was not there. So now, this little revalorization should enhance its effect and things like that oh 
What the hell? Let's go and buy one very quickly. So, um, yeah, now we br broke everything. We're going to go and refix everything. And I feel like everyone will be very much pleased. And the last one is going to be the Nightmare Dofus, which will allow the... Uh, it, the effects apply on the owner, on the holder, but it will give the malice or the buffs to uh, to its allies as well. Ability. Sold out. Completely sold out? <laughs> what? Completely sold out. <laughs> right. So there will be, uh, at the same time as the beta, uh, the modifications we've announced now will be arriving when the beta is up. The changelog will be listed and you will see all of the uh, uh, dofuses, everything. We will see everything and how it will change. We will go back on it soon, but we will talk about it during the rebalancing that is coming up soon. Yeah, um, so some additions, some, um, you will see everything that is up on um, five, last five, six weeks, you will see everything that we've done. We will give you everything in one big change log and you will see all the changes that had happened and everything this is the new office <laughs> certain of them like the zello for example that has been changed uh the um what is it called the um the spell from the uginag the chance one that loads up uh, poisons have also been changed so there's some modifications that we've seen in the beta we are finally happy to see a zello that is playable that people are excited about uh yeah but generally speaking it pleases us so much uh, in two words, globally we had good return, good um, good feedback, there will be loads of things to enhance, to better. Yeah, we've done our biggest pass of change, but we will continue to monitor it, we'll keep an eye on it, we will stay vigilant, and uh, yeah, it's, it remains important for us to uh, be in absolute best shape for December and uh, the game design is filling a gap and yeah we love it we love it like this we feel more comfortable with how it is right now and we want it to be as good quality as possible uh, for the release and one one more time the uh, Ribeck talked about it there will be a dev blog with a lot of theory crafting a lot of reading you guys will have a lot to get your head around yeah because we've recapped all the modifications right all the modifications that happened in the last week for those of you who followed every week the modifications of classes we've put everything all in one place but there'll be very little adjustments it will be more about the equipment side that, we, that has not been communicated yet uh, but uh, yeah we've also done some passes on classes before so we'll dissociate ourselves from them a little bit uh, it's not completely finished but we've done this pass uh, we wanted to do and now we can focus more on items and now we can rebalance uh, things as necessary from this one. I want to say one last word because I feel like uh, you were going to completely change topic. We have talked to you about it during the last live. But starting from uh, Thursday, there is a an event on the beta on the 20 year anniversary. The moment the update is done, uh, the um, the event will be up and you will be able to face some bosses level 190 and above. And depending on the boss, it will uh, give you more points. And depending on how many points you get, you get more rewards. We wanted to um, do this because this event specifically uh, would allow us to get more classes feedback, but also equipment now with all the changes. It will be the occasion for you guys to see uh, a lot of people worried about um, um, bosses with high HP now that we've lost a lot of uh, damage it will be the occasion for you to go and test stuff like that three weeks various bosses pretty much all of the 190 to 200 exclusively so you go and hit them and we will be able to test the new shield rework uh, we can see in chat that the ebony price has uh, times 10 just in uh, <laughs> I wait to see the nerf Every time. 
<laughs> we've seen that during the uh, revamp, the last of the revamp. We've seen the Josh go up, down, depending on what we've announced. And yeah, yeah. So we reserve the right to change everything in the beta. If you want to speculate, it's at your own risk and peril. If there's an up, there is very likely to be a nerf behind it. So there's always a disclaimer. Be vigilant. These are not the final changes that we've communicated. So thank you both of you, Crocus and uh, uh, the other guy for being here. We're going to mark a, s a small pose just to change interlocutors, change mics and things like that. Just to spare you the noise and everything like that. We come back from five minutes from now to talk about pre-registration and event of the start of the server. We have loads of things to announce to you. See you in five minutes. <laughs> oh, let's go. What the fuck? Dude! Dude! What? I literally, as they announced it, in the time it took me to log my character. <laughs> in the time it took me to log my character. And uh, literally check the price of the ebony. All of it was sold out and everything was on the market for two. I've put the first one on sale for 20 mil and people have, um, have put it on... Uh, Doubled in price. I've put it for 20 mil while I've translated. That was very naughty of me, but I wanted to try my luck. Who knows? It could have sold. <laughs> I didn't. People have already undercut me. Let's see what the nightmare... Oh, it's not going up in price. So what they said with the nightmare was something to the effect of... Um... I've completely missed it. I've, I, I don't, I don't, I, I didn't keep it in memory, but your allies benefit from the effect as well. The passive that it gives or something like that. And, uh, how can I find the information? Because these do not, ah, I forgot to s double stream, sad. I've, I've not had the chance to look at chat. What did I miss? Oh. Oof, any TLDR so far. All of the legendary items have been revamped. One line has been completely destroyed and everything else slightly up. Um, uh, all the shields have lost percentage damage and are now traditional, normal items that give vitality, stats, create resistances. And they also have some maluses that are not... Uh, game changer. They found a problem with the game change in nature of minus 14% close combat damage. When you put a four leaf, you cannot allow yourself to play close combat because you lose so much damage. It is stark. So you did not use uh, four leaf and play close combat in under any circumstances unless you were fully locked and that was your only option. So they've removed that malice bonus and they've taken those two and given them to trophies at level 150 which give you uh, percentage spell damage but will reduce your resistances which will give you resistances but buff uh, but reduce your spell damage. They've that dichotomy of you gain something lose something has gone from shields and has been added to trophies at level 150 which means uh, you uh, have a lot more options for theory crafting now. <clears throat> you don't always play around shields as the PS Metres, the cornerstone of a build. There are four, yeah, there will be four servers, but I don't know which one I'm in. I don't decide, and Camo will decide, and you will know why literally after they return in five minutes. And whichever one they decide for me, or whatever it is, I will let you all know, and then we can all go to that one. Nightmare buffs you as well. But I guess if you shield and unbewitched on the same turn, everyone gets out 10 percent damage incoming increase. Not just to you. I have no idea. I, I completely missed that bit, and it's my bad. My bad, everyone, because I was speculating at the same time. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be able to buy some Ebony's. This is this is. I used to watch these in French and then speculate my heart away and have a good time with it. Now I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been a little bit naughty and I've tried. No, it was playing all the time. Shit, sorry. Oh no, that's not good. So were you able to hear all right then? Were you able to get to make out my voice on top of theirs? Uh, all the exos are staying uh, Mura unless they remove them. 
unless they've added the stat that you had as a new typical stat, don't don't make any decision. Okay, thank goodness, thank goodness for that. Okay, okay, okay. Ebony, Ebony, you have to hit long range and then close combat twice to place it. Now, if you hit long range, you boost your close combat damage. If you hit close combat, it boosts your long range damage. So they've added an extra effect on top of everything it had because they realize it's such a hard Dofus to obtain. And it's part of the legendary six primordial Dofuses, which we don't know there are six anymore. And on top of that, it costs nearly two mil. You could get it for one and a half mil on low periods and nobody really uses it. It's circumstantial. So now it has gained a lot of value. Nice! Pre-registration we uh, website is up. New packs. Oh, let's go. New packs. Oh, they've, they've implemented it. 50,000 players. Everybody gets a Celestial Barbarian. 100,000. What? Everybody will get a free head change, face change, so you can have two. Two X, is that true? Apparence de tête, envie de changer avec cette main. 180 double XP. Whoa, full pack at 250. I think we're gonna break it. Right, we're back, we're back, we're back. Let me just uh, quickly double check. You can't hear them, right? As I've said, we have done a very quick. Can you just change in English on the side? <sighs> No, just egg audio, perfect. Right, for those of you who know this topic, we have brought Cool and Yola, these two fantastic people who are game designers on the project, and uh, we'll just summarize in very quickly. Uh, Temporises, that's what they do. If they don't do Temporises, <laughs> they work exclusively on events, right? New class test, no. <laughs> so, this is the summary of these two guys. Right. This part of the life, we will talk about things that are a little bit different from balancing. We will go back on a part that is really important for us. Servers open on the 3rd. I've seen some of you have refreshed the webpage regularly to see, but we're talking pre-registration because the third is the opening of new servers but who says new server that that which says new servers come with pre-registration just so we can manage the uh, player base so we can have a better repetition on all servers it's really important for us just like at Emporius, for example, if there's one server that is uh, incredibly uh, jump-packed or one that is low, we can fuse them. But here, we really have to have the right exact number and project ourselves in fusion over the long term, not immediately from the start. We talk pre-inscription, we talk also new servers. We really, really, really wanted to go back on something that has been lost throughout the years. And now with Unity coming back, we thought it was perfect time for you to get them back. These are the new server illustrations you already recognize them <laughs> we will put the image but god it's so cool it's incredibly cool <laughs> it's so cool to find these illustrations at the level of the name we have four new mono account servers dakal one two three four and the idea to name them like this is to be able to fuse them all under one server later on and it will be Dakar server we didn't want to create server with a super UI and then two weeks later we fuse them and one is lost and people feel bad about it we don't want that right here at least um, we anticipate the fusions and we'll be able to fuse while keeping the server identity nothing is lost there and the part <coughs> we were a bit doubtful we've added five multi-account uh, Brian, Mikkel, Raphael, Curiel and Salar, which will be available because this is the first time since very long that we open we open classic multi-server account. I don't even remember when the last time was. So this is the first pre-registration at Ankama for a multi-server account. And we know a lot of you play multi-account. And as you can see already, <laughs> we need pre-registration to see how many people are interested. Because for temporises, we sort of, we became good at sort of knowing 
how many players we will have and things like that. But with the process, we had uh, lots of data, lots of rushes. Uh, but for multi-account, we have loads in backup. Don't worry, if we explode the scores, we will add more. Don't you worry about it. We don't want to open too many at the start uh, the for service to not be populated. So, as ever, we did this for temporaries. We do it for others. We will be vigilant. We will keep an eye for all possible fusions where necessary. We won't fuse them from the first week. That's not the objective. But I really insist on saying it again because we've said it half-heartedly the previous live during two weeks ago or something. Like that. These are not expected to be fused with the traditional existing servers for a very long time. Long remains to be determined and defined. We count it in years. As long as these servers have not matured, we will not fuse them. There is no expected fusion between Dakar and Doraco after three months. If we ever have to fuse them, it will be when the economy will be sufficiently mature and that takes years. If we don't need it, we will not. If we need it, we will fuse it to specify. If the two servers are completely independent, they're alive, they're doing well, why are we talking about fusion? But if there is need for it, then it will only happen. So the pre registration for those of you who saw it, it's open. And you have until the 26th of November evening to pre register for one or other servers. You can pre, pre register for two servers, multi and mono, for example, on the same account. So if you want to play on mono account, for example, and you, and you know that you're going to play on multi as well, you can pre-register your team and then boom. The link, here it is in chat. Reggie, IT, please, can we have the link? Can we please have the link? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not saying this, but we will be able to um, serve a transfer for free. But I've, I've spoiled it. I've spoiled it. So don't worry about which one you pre subscribe and reserve. So, or you can just wait until we arrive at a conclusion together and I will make an announcement in the pub. So, at the level of slots, because these are new servers, we call them pioneer servers. These servers will be accompanied by their slots, character slots. Now, you will have five slots for every single one. And and for every single, there will be a lot that have 20 characters on 28 slots. You will have new slots on every single one of these. So you won't have to go to the shop and add slots and things like that. So you have five free slots on Pioneer multi-account and five on the mono account. One last word on the servers. In regard to Temporis, we've talked to you about this during the last live. We brought a lot of server modifications to better enhance the lag during the first early phases. So we will surely allow ourselves to set a limit at least during the pre-registration to avoid having empty servers after three weeks or a month or something like that so here we will try and go higher for the limit and see uh, the server with these modifications will be able to absorb a lot of players and uh, just to add a little thing, because you will add it on the 3rd of December. Technically, this is the new look of the server selection. This is what they look like. This is something we wanted to go back. It, we missed it. We love seeing these illustrations. It's so... The old servers as well, we'll get their illustrations back. Oh my god, I'm so pleased with this. It pleases us as well to see this. Oh, this is the Aternaris work, of course. Uh, the teams are scrambling, working so hard to bring you this beautiful design for it to be ready on the 3rd of December. We're so pleased with it. We love it. Oh, the, the five dragons. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, it packs a punch. I have the impression that you're all pleased with it, but I'm happy with it. Uh, internally, team side internally we are still working very hard to deliver this on the 3rd of December this was not within the initial scope of release of the 3rd but we've pushed the bar for you guys to have a mega kiff a mega pleasure upon release so you can see this beauty when it got released so um, from the 3rd of December, you'll be able to discover some more things that are coming. If there are any errors on the website or things like that, let us know. So the web team is in for a heavy day. <laughs> they know, yeah. We've been preparing for weeks. There is a crash. Yeah, there's likely to be a server crash. But don't worry. If there are any 
errors right now for the pre-registration. Don't worry about it. When we talk about uh, pre-registration, we talk about a uh, new release pack. We have some new offers that we have for you to celebrate this new. The packs, we've based them on taking old sets. Each one of these items are camo. You have some packs where you will have the time of your life. <laughs> oh, wow. Visuals, colors things like that, new features, and yeah, there will be a uh, camo, so from the starts, um, the, the mounts, mounts, uh, there's a lot of new packs and things like that, every single class will have its own appearances, from memory, seven, seven new appearances, something special for capes as well, <laughs> it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be really, really cool. There will be new slots as well for you to discover. You'll be able to use new one. Like for um, the... Uh, this one has wings. The uh, Mopi King cosmetic set. So it puts in value the new slots. The slots that did not exist in 2.0. Boom. So costume, integral costumes, wings, things like that. So yeah. We allow ourselves to have costumes and wings because we didn't have the ability to bring you the cool stuff that we are doing now. We no longer need to feed uh, the uh, um, Levy items. You no longer need to, to feed them. You can, from the start, boom, stop, pick the uh, look that you fancy. So if later on, uh, you no longer, if you sell them or buy them, you no longer need to level them, feed them. You can straight up, boom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a new server release, for example, if you have these items, you couldn't really feed them. Uh, it was hard to level them early on. And also for shoulder pads, we didn't have any items for them to eat, so we just decided to do away with it. Anyway, and before... <laughs> the, the equivalent, because Papino is Russian and Rebek always has something to add. So these are not items that give stats. These are pure cosmetics, right? So the color fans, for example, it's just a look. It's not the one in the Colosseum that give you stats. It's just that both of them are um, camo. They change appearances and things like that. There is no stats to gain from that. It's pure cosmetics. The only advantage that you'll have is the appearance, really. And the appearance gives you some... We all know that looks, the drip gives you extra damage in fights, so <laughs> buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're trying to do, really in essence, is to have the cleanest start, the most egalitarian start. So I've seen some people were worried about the colo tokens that were given. Don't worry, they will not be arriving on the new servers. <clears throat> the goal really is that for everyone to start from an equal footing, equal starting point. <laughs> Yola is invincible. Yeah. <laughs> During server rush is crazy. <laughs> we talked pre registration. I want to remind you that they're open. The link is. I know a lot of people have uh, flocked to the same website and you've crashed it. <laughs> but you've got three weeks. You've got a few days to pre register. Don't worry about it. So. Game design side, we have planned a massive event for the release with Yola. So, on the third, you have the balancing, you have this new server release, you have all the modifications that we've been working on, left, right, uh, everything is good, but... An event, come on, wouldn't it be even better? A massive event! It would be really cool! So it would be good to accompany all these changes, all the hard work, all the cool stuff that we've been doing. Why don't we do a little back to rush? And they're having a, jo a little joke about it being in English. Back to rush. <laughs> so, essentially, the concept. Yola, what is it? <laughs> so, it was not expected. This was not expected to be asked. Alright, cool. So, what is the idea? So, they're, they're fighting who's going to explain and nobody wants to explain. So, in essence, it will be an event where we will have five teams that will fight each other, right? They will compete with each other at the start of the server. You will be able to pick your server at the start. Uh, yeah. uh, he was about to spoil the teams. He said it's coming, don't worry about it. There is an Ankama team and four uh, influencer teams, right? Next, you will be able to pick your team uh, in Incarnum, just like you during the Shadow event, you will be able to pick the team and you'll be able to have their uh, appearance and everything. And you will be able to contribute points toward the team. 
You will represent one team and you will add points to that bigger team, right? Add in Karnam. You will be able to pick from the five teams. And if you're not fan of X or Y team, uh, uh, if you don't like a certain team, uh, I know that most of you will find the team that you like and vibe with and you will go to it. But if uh, if you're not part of eSports, you don't care about things like that. And um, um, we added one that is sort of recognizable for everyone, which is the Ankama team. So you can... Uh, uh, yeah, for the community of the office to pick if you're not into esports. In any case, in any case, hold on, hold on, chat is going crazy, chat is going crazy already. <laughs> because it builds up. So, in essence, uh, for those of you who played Shadow, you will be able to see um, the idea is to have pioneer achievements. These are achievements that can be done by a number of people who are first to do them. Let's imagine uh, the first level 200 in the FECA class mm, will add a certain number of uh, and the five first one to do that achievement will give points but in a digressive manner. The first one gets more, second one, third, less, 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 right. We've listed three, the first level 100 in every class, the first one to solo a boss, the first one to kill a thousand monster. You have a lot of pioneer achievements, don't worry about it. There's like two, three hundred new achievements, a voluminous pack we've added. There's also a manner of adding points that is global progression. What does it mean? For every week, we will, we will do a snapshot of global progression of everyone, I think it will be Monday evening. We will look at certain, certain depending on some certain criteria that we will delineate in the devlog, you will be able to see the criteria. You will be able to see the players, the success points, the top of every team, the first 500 of every team, and then we will add the points and attribute them, and it will add their team up, down, and, uh, hit, and these are four bullet points from a C of chain, like 15 or uh, 14, there's 14 of them. So uh, the level of players, um, for every team we'll take the 500, the top 500 uh, players in the levels, are they all 200, 190, and you'll have a different level of points attributed depending on, yeah. If there is an imbalance, why did we pick 500? Uh, because of imbalance, because some team might have less than... So it's not the biggest team that will win, but it's the best team that will win. So you can have the smallest team, but have the 500 most crazy players and still be top. Uh, we will have some uh, uh, pioneer for, um, uh, for uh, professions. If you're not a big rusher, for example, right and you want to contribute points you can do professions you can do what you love in the game during the rush if you're not particularly a rusher for level and dungeons and farming you can play your own way and still be valuable to your team and contribute points and the last point which really brings a big novelty is the world events these are world events they will happen during the game it will change the way that we progress during the game for the first for the start of the adventure so you will have events per day i think three events per day D different events for example one event is uh, uh, you will have to kill monsters in a certain area and you have messages in chat that will announce the message and we will wipe the entire area and we will replace them with new monsters same monsters but different stats and things like that and that will add points to your team and it will give you points and your team as well and the event will last between one to two hours depending on the, t the event type between one to two hours uh, the first week it will always be one hour and then the second week it will be two hours and the difficulty will increase so there will be dungeons farm resources uh, gatherables for uh, professions troll fair events uh, treasure hunts, so we will have 
events for global practically every single facet of the game so you will have a planning every week like the snapshots we've mentioned where we will tell there will be this event f per day there will be this for this week in this hour so you can plan and even in game you will get push notifications that will tell you 15 minutes before if this is happening soon uh, you will have uh, reminders of the event before they happen the points attribution to your team so 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 cool and one of the really cool points after that on the slide there's the rewards. Oh, there's no rewards. What? What? So the points that you will win will allow you to buy things that are really annoying to buy in the first, like uh, nuggets, uh, pebbles, some uh, breeding resources. There's four event tiers where you will be able uh, to buy using not in massive quantities enough to progress and facilities smooth the progression not enough to stack the market and for you to make commas from it it's just to smooth in your progression just like we've done on shadow it is a way to be able to accelerate the early silver rush speed it up make it smoother rather than uh, make resources available in masses for you to enrich yourself and flood markets as I say it is literally to fluidify the new server period and make it easier for everyone so we've talked about teams but we haven't tell, told you that the influencer teams I've seen some that have guessed two of them but not all of them I've seen some spoils on some chess and some streams. Yes, yes. <laughs> some of you are too hyped that they've leaked stuff. So the team, the influencer team, is the one that you recognize. Solari, it's a very well-known team in Akama. We see them in Dofus Play. Aegis, which is a really cool team as well. The old folks, as we like to call them. <laughs> the oldest people of the esports. We like this because typically... Uh, we exchange the DVG, the guy, uh, he's very motivated to play and he loves the game and he's planning a boot camp. <laughs> yeah, they're preparing a boot camp for it. We have gentle mates, which will be available. Gentle mates, for those of you who don't know, we will tell you who will be present later on. But here again, we're so pleased to have such passionate people uh, of the game. And then we have the Carmen Corp. We were talking about certain uh, uh, lives in, in restaurants where they were talking about the office for four hours. We've heard loads of rumors. We were so happy to unite such big teams around our game, around our project. Uh, these are influencer teams that you, you will be able to, if you're not a fan of esports, obviously, you don't recognize any of these. You can just go to the community team, which is called the Ankama team. And... You'll have to challenge yourself to pick the right team. I have my favorite. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. This is the Pope speaking, not me. Uh, the idea is for you to be able to show your belonging to your team and try and push it upward, try to make them win, try to give them a maximum number of points and try to accompany these influencers that are part of it. So, we talked about the teams. Who are the influencers that are part of every single team? For team, for Solary. A really stacked team. We have Wax, Chap, Sapper, Wax, and Sa uh, the, the Eternal Grandpa, the Sapper. You can already see they have an advantage because this guy knows very well Dofus, and a lot of them know the game very well. They played it, they are advanced. So cool, so cool. So the idea, you know, at Modernus, at Ankama, we really have the chance to have influences that follow us every year, every update, with an unconditional love almost, that we really like to thank by pushing them forward in this operation and benefit them from this beautiful event, right? Every single team has generals, but also will have content creators as part of it. For the Solary team, we have Lani, Tarkan, uh, Fallon, and Dofus Akubo, Bruno. They will be part of the Solary team. They will stream their entire adventure, but they are part of the Solary team and they have their own they have their own events, their own achievements on top of the pioneer events that everybody has access to. And I wanted to go back on Akubo. It was really interesting for us to include the international community. Bruno, I've met him a handful of times 
lives. He is a delight. He is lovely. He's always smiley. We love him. We love the guy. Uh, this We're so happy to see the international community involved in this very big, humongous operation. And this is it for Solary. Second team, Asia's, the old people team, the old fellas. <laughs> the generals, we have two. We've mentioned one of them earlier. Uh, we have Mr. MV and DFG who will be present. They will rush the server as well. DFG, we said, these guys are try harding. They are not here to just do a little OP, a little operation, uh, make a name for himself. And he is here to win it. He made it clear they will be boot camping. They will be in one place altogether farming this shit on live. They are here to win it. And for the officer team, we've got Barbados, Team Tobias, Shoji, and Single Malt. Again, here again, for the international community, we have represented them. And in terms of knowledge of the game, we're really good. We're really good. We have some representation, a lot of representation. And Aegis, I can tell you, they're going to try hard, but very dirty. They're going all in. They're going crazy. As Yola said, it's not the number of players in a game, in a team that will dictate the winners, right? It is the motivation of the team to motivate 500 players that will get the points. And as we've seen in the shadow, the team that won were 27 or 30 and they won the entire event against the team, big teams like uh, Last Barouder and Uz, who had much bigger guilds and teams and things like that. So let's go. It's the quality, not the quantity that will matter in this very competition. And small team can very easily win it. Next one, we have... A small team, gentle mates. This will make the most noise, I think. This is me speaking. <laughs> gentle mates, for the generals, you, I think you, you know a few of them. A certain Squeezy and Nikov. These are very popular people in France. All of this has been authorized and seen and double checked. Yes, you're not dreaming. We have these two people that will be streaming Dofus. Holy smokes! Holy smokes! Look him up. Typically, Squeezy is one of the generals right now who who give us feedback and he's hyping it uh, he's present on the discord with the content creator it is going crazy for the event this is nuts this is nuts it pleases us so much to see that the love of the game for everyone that has played that all of our content creators and things like that um, <coughs> Um, these are the gentlemate generals and here we have a very solid team with the usual household names humility is Tsunadida and Yoda these are the four officers who will have their own independent achievements that will contribute to the team here again it's spicy we know the game we've thought about it a lot we have played a lot of versions for a very long time gentlemate are not going to be so easy to to uh, to vanquish again we want to remind you because you're seeing those two and thinking that's it it's one it's not the quantity it is the quality it's about five week long event we will see how people will rush it how people will stay on top of it how fast you are endurance will be king here last team Carmen Corp. Generals, I think you already know. You've seen it. They've hyped it. They've spoiled it. We have Kameto and Kamal and uh, Kote. Both of them, the inseparable duo, will be there. They will fight for it. It will not be their first office rush. It will not be their last. They're in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not gonna sleep much. There'll be a lot of rage, but you know, a little glu gluto blob that is here to swallow all the achievements. So yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Carmen, Carmen team. And oh, the, at the level of the officers here, we have some beautiful people again. Nozada, everybody knows it. He will be available. Last Barouder as well. Uh, Papai and Majem, who uh, all we all know Majem on the international community. We'll be speaking with him sometime soon. His love for the multi account has been suspended to play mono account for this event. And knowing him very well. Um, <coughs> 
He has already taken the multi-account pseudos just in case so he can continue his adventure later on. But again here, another team of big players. And if you look at the table globally, holy smokes the teams, holy smokes! It's gonna be wild. It, it's not one, it's gonna be a rush. Oof. So every player that will come to the game will be able to participate and represent one of these teams and contribute his points to these teams and be part of the bigger thing. Right. Collective effort. So you pick the team that you want and then you join it. We will not communicate which server every influencer influencer is, but they will be spread over different servers. So that everybody doesn't go just to the one server and it gets overloaded and everything else is empty because you know, Squeezy has 5 million subscribers. If he brings his army of 20,000 live viewers, one server is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, multi account, mono account, you'll have the same events, the same rewards, and everything. But the rush is not just mono account, it will be available on multi account as well. I was going to come to it. Uh, good, good reminder. The other point that is really important is at the level of the follow-up, you will have a ladder where you will be able to see the points that you've been attributed, the ladder of every single team. You will, there's a filter for multi and mono. So you'll be able to follow your own adventure via these ladders on your own server to see which, ser which team is winning, where to see which teams have won more Pioneer achievements which team needs to motivate the troops more and things like that as Ribeck said that it will be for over long weeks i have no doubt you will be 400 percent and we go crazy to be able to maintain the flame on the lead up to the fifth week as we've said we've seen this during the shadow uh, rush uh, we've seen this during uh, um, the shadow event. You needed a very well prepared, very well organized team, and we've seen it before. At the beginning, everybody were try. That that event was for tr the biggest try hardest. Now this is open for everyone. The uh, pioneers were try hard for shadow. It was by design, but here everybody will be able to um, participate, and you don't have to be the best in the server to help your team. You don't need to go that far. And uh, for the world events, I need to. Spend specify this for resource gathering for example it means for an hour to two hours we will add ask you to farm the most amount of cereals we will make sure that the uh, game development side that the event for the gathering we will do teach three tier possible for example uh, 1 to 30, 60 to 90, 90 to, to make sure that there's enough nodes that you're all able to participate and not just uh, during the resource phase, for example, not the, the, the collection of resources. So, yeah, we want everybody for at the start of the event for the maximum to be able to participate, not just people who have advanced too much. So the more, the faster we are, the more we are, the more we get to the end uh, higher end of the progression we might add new events for them to make it more interesting but it will always be interesting for everyone to participate to speed up the uh, points gathering and the rewards unlocking of course uh, one last word excuse me uh, on the account <laughs> for the Ankama team we haven't given you any details um, there won't be any generals and officers and things like that we will we want to rush ourselves that the Ankama team is there to show you that uh, Ankama as well can maybe win and <laughs> for those people who don't want to tag along any sort of uh, um, existing uh, esports and Ankama it's everyone the entire community we represent you you can join us and everything but yeah we'll see I expect a lot of uh, people to participate. Uh, we don't want to spam the chat, but... Uh, team Kua, well, which teams are you guys picking? Can you please tell me in chat, he's asking. It's not one specific server. Re regardless of which server you are, you can pick the team and help them from that server. So we will pick... Uh, let's see what their chat is saying. Solari, Aegis... <laughs> Casey, Carmen Corp, lots of Carmen Corp, lots of uh, Ankama team. 
fois qu'il y a combien un peu tout, il y a plus de répartition. Ah, there's a big repetition, so loads of people are getting uh, shot. That's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, I don't know Hitsu, but I will pick one uh, after the live. I will have to think about it, and I'll make an announcement. So yes, it is into server. All servers are represented, and every server will have the same number of points to bring. It's not just because every best players will be on one server. That means get every single server has its own number of points to bring. So, regardless of globally, whether you are on the server where your influencers are on the same server or not, you have uh, a vested interest in being in as many servers so you can get the points from those ones as well to your team because the points will be tallied from all servers because the pioneer achievements will be present on all of them. So if you're on a server where you're already 10,000, you are going to have a hard time to sort of get the points. And Whereas if you go on servers that are more le less crowded, it might be easier for you to get the points and things like that. So yes. It means that you will have a less uh, hard competition if you go to a less... Uh, so there's no server per team. So all the servers can participate towards every team. And for the final uh, rewards, it's still a part that we need to continue working to find the right rewards for you guys. We have started, we have some ideas. We don't have something that is sufficiently convincing for such a big event, but it's something that we will go back to you once we have the good formula for this. In any way, we didn't go into detail of the functioning, the points, things like that. So we will go back in a dev blog. We will show you what the event looks like. So you don't feel behind that. You don't understand the event and things like that. So you, and we will mention the rewards, of course. And one point that I did, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it here. <coughs> I've heard a lot of discussion about it. There's a certain team that is preparing a certain something. We, we have recruited some uh, generals, some officials. We might add them. We will communicate this here. We don't know. There, there, there are some things that are happening. We're organizing internally. We're trying to find a structure for the Ankama team as well. So all the influencers, whether it's Carmen Corp, Gentlemate, Aegis or uh, Solary. What we've presented here is the skeletal body, the, uh, the general idea. This is what I've prepared. We have a lot. Every day we receive ideas of it would be good if we add this. It would be good. So we're, it's still a work in progress. We have a few weeks, but what we can, this is what I present to you. The skeletal body that we presented to you is really, really cool. Uh, there is a mount spe special that we're working on. A lot of the rewards, we don't even know what they are yet, but there is a surprise that is working. We don't necessarily have all the information, but there are some things that are in the works now. Everybody's so hyped for this. And for the 3rd of December, we're all ready to come and pound servers and get going. So we can see the hype. We can see the organization getting going. It's, yeah, we're all so excited to get this bad boy started because it has been a while that we're working on it putting things in place knowing very well that what we've presented to you now these are things that can come back on the actual servers these events we've created for this for the new servers but it's certainly something that will arrive on the classical servers like other new mechanics like with guilds with AVA there's a lot of things to do with this because the the tech that we've used now and what we've been able to create for this new server release is so cool that we'll bring it to them. <laughs> See? I've checked with you before I change slides because I know you have something. Uh, the, the event will be on the new servers, not on the existing one because it's a rush server. In uh, Shadow, we've done it with a lot of uh, jumping hoops to make it possible and available. But here, here, it will be a new server rush and everybody will have access to it on the new server not on the legacy traditional one. Uh, yeah, so after four or five weeks on the normal new servers, they will be able to carry on their lives as normal and it's, it'll be fine. You continue as normal. <laughs> the calendar flies by, time goes quickly. So we change slides. <laughs> 
Nouveau sujet, parce que du coup, là, on vous a... Oh, euh, big topic. Here again, last topic. Last, I promise. It's the last one of the three topics. So, it's got a lot more madness to it at the level of the modification. We think these are some of the coolest things. It's been a while that we've been preparing these new servers. We've made a, mas a massive, fantastic new server. So, we thought, why don't we push the boat a little bit on game design side, but that will give us the biggest comfort and will bring the coolest things to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so here are some of the changes that we're bringing. Yeah. So, to go back on the very first change, you have seen the game, uh, the change log, the dev blog that we've uh, brought. Uh, the Kama exchange, we've brought these changes so that the Kama exchange and buy-in Kamas will be unavailable for people who have been created starting from the 1st of January 23 that have not made at least one money purchase the objective here is to do anti-botting efforts it's things that we've discussed very lengthily internally and these are decisions that we didn't take very easily or lightly it's things that are beneficial to the project to the game and the future of it and we've tried we thought it would be best to pass these changes before the release of the new server so that you guys can benefit from it so we can keep an eye on it and make sure they are implemented well anyway it's a big modification we wanted to go back on it despite you having had the information already to read don't hesitate to go back and read it see what the modifications are and uh, yeah it's important for us to keep an eye on things like that and to let you know we continue on this trajectory of fighting against bots and this was one of them. anything nothing, <laughs> nothing. Uh, some in control Someone control. <clears throat> it is now part of the modifications that we've done for new server release. Historically, it was one thing where you have to go and click on all the cells to go get the spells so that you can have access to... Now, there was a little bit of um, scenery that explains to you how to get it in a more natural way, more seamless way. And just to finish on the very last thing, the little island, a little historic island, you no longer need to go all around Astrub to click on the tiles, we couldn't do that with that anymore. Now, technically, little modification but it's so easy it will make life so much better if you just go get it and that's it so there will be an npc in front of the paddock in our troop and you just speak with them and that's it oh there's a little fight oh there's a little tutorial fight to explain how what is the uh the um uh, summon control and it takes you to the island so we don't delete it altogether and a little not to its historic importance it's not a fight to make life hard for you but it's one to explain it's a little rework uh, it will make the server more agreeable better for you and it will give you more information which the old time quest was so annoying because all you had to do is go into the office pool and fight them and then just go and click instead of engaging with the quest so this will please you i'm sure and that is one of the changes other modifications holy smokes and these are some big modifications whoa whoa there's a big summary we reassure you we're not going to spend half an hour on each one Anyway, guilds and pal, I, I profit from this moment right here to say, we've talked about a lot. For new servers, there will be a, uh, a pack that will be separated from other servers. There will be two different environments altogether. Two different environments, two different economies and everything like that. We'll talk about that later. Guild levels. Do you want to get us on uh, guilds, Yola? Generally, at the guild level, everybody wants to create their guild. And it was annoying to have your il your own guild, you needed the guild allergen. And now, you can go to the temple, and there's an NPC that will sell you the guild allergen. 30,000 camels, done. And same thing with the Alia gem. NPC, same place, you buy it, and you create your alliance. All done, boom. And the shield and uh, the banner for the guild alliance, you'll be able. So there will be no more monopoly in mines, people that go and farm certain ores to stop everyone having access to them. So there will be details on these new guilds and paddocks 
there will be only one paddock buyable by the leader every 24 hours. The purchase and utilization of uh, is possible at level 60 and plus. The guild has to be level 60. And you have to be 15 days old to be able to buy a paddock. All of these chains are principally to stop the monopoly of paddocks that we've seen in guild in uh, servers like Jahash and other things. So generally, the abuses we could see them come in, but we have reviewed certain numbers of rules to stop these things. There's potentially some other things that we've missed, or some things that we some minuscule things, and as as it is with these things, the detail in, the devil is in the detail. But we will be vigilant. We'll remain vigilant and make sure the will is there. We want to bring modifications and continue battering them for. To make it easier for you. So now you pay 30,000 karmas, boom, you have your own guild. Because the social aspect in this game is so central. And we don't want you to stay guildless for many days. And remove also the toxic monopoly that was there at the start. <coughs> yeah, and it was a bit annoying for people to wait two days to be able to play together. And have difficulties organizing themselves. So yeah, we've removed the restrictions. At the level of Colosseum, they're memeing hard. <laughs> Every page there will be a meme. I like, I like. <laughs> so Colosseum, it was part of the topics that they, uh, that was spammed, but we don't do anything about it. Everything is ready. Everything was ready weeks ago, but we haven't made it. So there will be a matchmaking separated between the Pioneer and all servers, the existing legacy servers. There will be a um, uh, ranking decrease automatic for ladders, for example. The two modifications, so master plasma, uh, placement matches and uh, lowering of ranking will be tied. So winning your 9 out of 10 placement match. Oh, so what we've seen is some people would do, would win 9 out of their 10 placement uh, games. And they would be top ladder and they wouldn't do any more fight and still be end by the end of the season. So which means, so there's be there's going to be four, five uh, ranking points that will reduce every day, starting from a certain level. So people that are not in the top ladder, they won't technically be impacted by this uh, change. But for people who are going top ladder, you will have to take risks, you will have to do fights, you will have to be in game to keep and retain your place in the top ladder. And the modification as well is at the placement fights, the first placement fights. So there will be, um, without getting into too much detail, you will need more fights to get to the legend. Uh, and the first fights will give you less points, there will be less variation in the um, uh, placement. So you'll have to do a lot less, a lot more fights to reach your permanent ranking and then you can progress from on. So the first uh, initial fights are less impactful. And the last one, on the ladder, we will add the win rate. So the number of map fights you've won as a total of uh, out of uh, um, so yeah. So if you have someone that is 250 in the ranking, uh, 2,000 in the ranking, and they've won 250 fights, now you'll be able to tell that they've done 4,000 fights and only won 250. So around the world quest, the quest that gives us headaches anew. Every rush, every temporis, every new server, you have to do the dungeon, the blob dungeon, four times. And we were sick of it. That's it. I've done the rush, and between the four blobs you go to sleep. You only need to do one now, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> and there, there's a lot of dungeons. And we've added all the low-level dungeons that were not part of it, they are now added. That's it. It was a bit more complicated to do, but we've done it. The work is here, and uh, you've got more achievements, more resources, more rewards. Boom, 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 boom. boom. <coughs> So it will change your rush and yeah, this annoying grindy part of we're going to do the blob. Come on, let's do it another game. It was terrible. We hated it. We couldn't do with that anymore and we've reviewed it.
it. That is gone. New dungeons are added. We've been talking to you about this for a week. The transfer of characters between servers will be instant and immediate. <laughs> you don't initiate it and transfer next week. Now it is instant, near instant. So from the 3rd of December, you'll be able to transfer your character from one server to the other. The only condition would be to do your uh, server request and disconnect. The moment you log back, done, you've transferred. So as we've said prior, if you are on very hefty servers uh, during this rush, you will have the possibility to just switch. Uh, I'm done, I'm just going to another server. 10 minutes later, you are already on the next server and you can profit fully from the event. You can join your friends, you can join your guilds, you can... Uh, it's between mono and multi as well. Uh, same restrictions apply. You won't have uh, old to the pioneer. You won't be able to go from multi to mono. We will keep the same setup that we have right now. So, between the servers, at the start of the server, they will be completely free. On the new servers, between them, for how long? I don't know exactly. I think surely, very likely, for the first few weeks, for the populations to find their own balance. And it's a service that we have an entire dev blog that will appear to give you all the details of the formula when it is ready. Is there a cooldown between two transfers? No. No, you can just zigzag between servers. <laughs> Again, these are formulas that will stay vigilant to see if there are any abuses or anything like that. They, this will allow servers to organically balance themselves. Uh, and there will be very little variation in economies, be economies between them. Yeah, only the new servers should go. Only the new servers. And uh, yeah, so there will be more balance. Uh, uh, when fusions happen, there will be very less impact on the new servers that emerge and things like that. And it will allow us to balance populations and possibly push the dates of the first fusions. Because organically, players will uh, organize themselves well and there will be less incentive for us to uh, fuse servers and do crazy things with them. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the answer to the question that I've just seen in chat now. If we get the, the answer... Ah, I've missed it. I should have answered that question when I had it in mind, but I've lost it. If we, get the, uh, if, if we remember the answer, we'll let you know. Name Checker. What is Name Checker? Globally, it was the logic server side that would invalidate or not a pseudo. The moment you put a character name and you want to create a character, the Name Checker would scan it and see whether it respects the conditions or not. So, what would happen? All of you who have created characters or multiple ones knew how much our rules were honestly abhorrent. And there were some words you could use, some combination of letters, without even giving you a reason for it. The logic was not logic in. <laughs> and, and yeah, it wasn't working very well. We had more than 2,500 lines of requirements that did not make a shroud of sense. Some things were, uh, sometimes you would generate a random name and it wouldn't accept it. That's how crazy it was. <laughs> and uh, space and accents. Calm down on spaces, both of you. We're trying to, we want to have it, but it's not. It's one of those really hard things, development side to bring to. It's really not evident. You will always have the little dash, the hyphen between two words. You have a possibility to do two hyphens, not three, just two maximum. Can we do now XX uh, dash dash uh, <laughs> abusive rock server? <laughs> Can we do it? <laughs> yeah. But generally, the importance, the information that is really important is these things are already in place for the pre-registration. So you're more free to create uh, um, your pseudos, your stuff like that. Yeah, there were words that were completely banned. So we had uh, a, a thing that were called deep looking, the chain of character. So not only the word was banned, but 
Uh, also, the letter, if you had two letters uh, between each other, it didn't work. So it was crazy, it didn't make a shot of sense. We've completely changed it, it's already in place. So when you go and uh, pick your pseudonyms, be creative. Use that in mind. So you will be able to get your pseudonyms now on the new servers and get a bit more creative and we're looking forward to see that because we have been very limited at that level. Modifications at the levels of pets. Two things that please us so much. Here again, we've talked about the problems that we have with uh, pets at the low levels. They are so hard to obtain, so hard to level, so we brought two modifications. The quantities required to borrow a pet to acquire one. So some would ask you for a hundred Uga hairs or whatever, which was completely ridiculous. <laughs> we've changed that. We didn't change that in the past. We've made idols, uh, achievements and everything. But now because of the new server release, we want to make them more available. And the other point is the characteristics that pets give depending on their level before it was a uh, a um, a sort of linear curve from zero to 100 now at level zero your pets will have stats but the progression will be slower but that means at level 50 instead of having half of its stats it will have a bit more but you will have used it from all this time so a level zero, once you get your pet more easily now because we've reworked how you obtain them, you will get stats immediately. So we've put more value on pets and away again. So 10% of the stats are at level one. For example, if a pet gives you 120 prospection, the moment you obtain it, you get 12. Yeah, and the um, uh, peewees also, instead of asking you for 500 feathers, now it's 100 feathers plus some sesame seeds. I don't know exactly the quantity. And the last bit will be equipment drop is coming back. Let's go. Gelano is droppable again. <laughs> the meme is cool. The meme is really cool. <laughs> we brought it back, but with moderation. Not all sets. Uh, so all sets, all items between 1 and 60 are droppable on their, uh, on their uh, respective families. Except, except the je jelly set. Uh, except the jelly set. Where? Uh, the gelano will be droppable on all families, so you don't have to focus on the red ones only. So, uh, you have more chances of dropping gelano by doing all four than by fighting one type, uh, g generally. <laughs> Uh, the blob dungeon, the blob set, we did not include them because we want to value the drop. You're at the level where you can do higher level content, farm for resources. These are markers of adventures. We didn't want to replace the craft altogether. And that is why we've done up to level 60 because from that point, we think it's better for you to go through crafts and contribute to the economy, buy resources, sell resources, rush the dungeons and get the resources yourself, make bread. Generally speaking, the drop is good until 60 and then we want you to full-fledged join the economy and start. Mm, 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 mm. We want to make things easier, seamless at the start so you'll be able to drop more items. Um, yeah, and also we wanted to bring that in that feeling that we all know and shared in the past. At the end of a fight, you're always excited to see whether I dropped an item or not. Did anybody get a gelano? And that feeling of dropping a gelano before you reach level 60 on where you are level 60 after a fight while farming the resources to make it. Oh my god, that excitement. And the drops as well will be targeted. If we put Scara leaf or quark, uh, all Scara items will be on any Scara and all, um, and the quacks as well. So Quacko will have all of them droppable, so they will be targeted. And also, especially, new set, the new Schaefer, new Cardarim set, what? For those of you, what? There will be new sets. Uh, old Schaefer's. Microply. What? There will be new sets that will be arriving for low levels. That is really cool. The press picks that will be droppable on press picks. Gobble on gobbles. Uh, royal gobble on royal gob uh, on gobbles as well. And if I did not forget anything, the shields as well. Oh, this is really cool. It's already cool.
Et si, il a pas de... bah, et toutes les autres panneaux qui sont déjà droppables, oui. Vous... All the sets that are already <rire> droppable will stay <rire> droppable. <rire> the change is adding new ones. <rire> voilà. <rire> We're not removed anything. We've only added. <rire> I uh, know, Dolphuses will not be droppable, just because I've seen that a lot in chat. This is not happening. That's it. That ship has sailed, it's gone. <laughs> There will be some for all subjects. And that concludes all the modifications that you can expect for the 3rd of December. That's pretty much it. Uh, with globally, if we have to re-summarize the entire line, we had loads of balancing at the start that we've told you about for the sets, uh, items, uh, shields. And then we moved on to the influencer big event for the server rush. And the biggest part for the community, the uh, pioneer events, the new world events, and all the community aspect to it. And we've just finished the biggest arc, the biggest, the beautiful arc of the minor modifications that will please you the most, like we've said about Paddock Colosseum, uh, being able to buy Gildalogem for 30,000 camas, not having to camp the mines. So, all these changes are taking place until the from now until the 26th of November. You ha you'll be able to pre um, pre subscribe. Oh, we forgot to talk about keys. Oh, we forgot about talking about keys. We've talked about balancing and we've completely forgotten it. Yeah, we didn't talk about recipes. We didn't talk about keys. God damn it, I've seen it in chat. Yola, tell us about keys and the uh, achievements from uh, the resources you get from achievement. God damn. There's no slide. <laughs> You're just gonna have to improvise. <laughs> First point. I have changed all the key recipes. All of them. All of them. Being simplified. Easy. Two changes you need to know. The first one. The resources of uh, professions have been drastically reduced at, at all levels. And I've added uh, a hunter. Uh, I've added uh, uh, farmer and uh, fisherman and alchemist, and we've completely kicked out uh, lumberjack and uh, miner because these two, in many, they are present in many recipes and not neither. So right now the fish and uh, the meats, we did nothing but make uh, sausages. You know that 200 inches. <laughs> <laughs> He said fishermen and talked about sausages <laughs> and Papino picked them up on that. Yeah, yeah, fish sausages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one, two recipes at level 200. It's um, it's resources that are gatherable to units. It will only ask for one. So frosties, uh, the, what is it called? Uh, um, Aspen log. And for monster resources, we've doubled because we used to ask one. Now we ask for two because there's an over generation of resources. If you want to make keys, let's put resources on the resources from monsters rather than the um, profession. Um, and for achievements, for achievements, monster achievements. Mm -hmm. Two things for monster achievements. There's a lot of uh, resource, uh, monster resources have been fused, like Minotot, for example, that would drop six different resources. Uh, Abra family. I think we found about. Um, 70? 70? We did not delete them, we've converted them. They will become consumables and it will give you the resources that we have f fused. So you will get a head start for uh, making keys. Anyway, and all the monster achievements and the rewards from them have been reviewed so that they stick and they make sense to the recipe that we want for the last dungeons. Uh, that means 10 resources Uh, unique monster resources for each for all um, for all achievements that's crazy for level 200 stuff whoa it will impact the old achievements where uh, you were lacking one monster or give you one resource or give you one rare resource here now the monsters that have rare resources you will be able to get them via drops and not via achievements to give uh, value to the resource and to the activity itself of dropping them <coughs> A lot of people are talking about the um, uh, the key that you can use every week for free. For it's very touchy to the changes. We have many formulas that we've tested. We're thinking about game design wise, but it's so too touchy. To now, it's a very bad idea to try and touch it before the third of December. So we're just gonna keep it as it is. 
ne serait-ce que comment il marche, yeah. c'est pas un objet où on met It's not an object that we put a list of dungeon and it works. It is managed by the server because it's been a long time, so to touch it we need to look at code that we don't really want to touch and removing it would be too chaotic as well. So the real solution would be to make modifications on the key itself, but no, no, we won't be deleting it at all, no, no, no. It's too powerful and things like that. We'll have to find a good compromise, but we're not touching it for the 3rd of December because it's too sensitive. Should we conclude on this? <laughs> ah, one last point, Rivek. <laughs> you're starting. This is too much, Rivek. Come on, man. Come on. They have one point each. One thing that is uh, uncorrelated to this slide, but I wanted to remind you, there is the event, the PVM event for 12 years, 20 years, that is starting on the 9th, so next weekend, on the beta, and you will have a dedicated server for you to be able to uh, do some challenges to do. There was a live that was already announced with all the explanations and things like that, so it's starting from the 9th. And another really cool, cool things and mad insane rewards. So the PVM tournament, they are, there hasn't been enough official Ankama, there, there's not many. And it's the occasion for those of you who think you're strong in PVM to come and test yourself. <laughs> there's no difficulty in PVM, we hear it, we hear it. We've made it so that, come on, let's come, come and test what we've cooked for you. And you will see so many things that we've made, game design wise, lots of novel mechanics and things like that for you to be able to test it and see all the cool stuff we've had so uh, the uh, event has been um, uh, trusted to KTA so they've uh, helped us massively thank you to them for that and uh, we wanted to game design helped a lot with many of the uh, um, challenges and things like that to make the event more exotic more interesting ah yeah 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 no. Don't hesitate to take part in this event and tell us about the difficulty. Uh, Volca, big winner for everyone who says Volca is the big winner. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. We will see. Uh, <laughs> you've asked for difficulty, we've provided. Uh, I want to answer all the questions that have been asked about uh, Paddocks because it's a double edged sword. There's two things that we wanted to go back. So, globally, globally, the feature as it is. Non, non, non. Les a lus. Ah, non, 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 non. Ils, ils ont après, spam non. de questions. Ouais, ça va. Allez, réponds. Bon, bah, du coup, je réponds. All right, they spam too many questions. Globally, the entire feature is locked at level 60, whether it be um, uh, breeding, paddocks, and even buying a paddock, the cooldown. Si, si, si. So they've... You've told the cooldown, yeah. People were asking about the cooldown, did you not tell them already? Ah, uh, they have the same attention span as you. <laughs> so there's a 20, in essence, there's a 24 hour cooldown. Only, only the leader can buy a paddock and once every 24 hour and you have to be level 60 and the guild has to be level 60 and there's a lot more restriction. Uh, the name of the international server for multi-accounting, no, we don't have that. Ah. Oh, he's going to go get the name of the multi-international server. <laughs> the big houses that are so desirable, we have to decide. We have not decided yet. Uh, the question was asked many times before. Uh, we're still looking for the perfect formula. We have friends in touch that have tried many things. We had some uh, uh, some feedback. We don't have a conclusive answer yet. It's not evident. Uh, there's a lot of drama. It's tiresome. There's a lot of manipulation that happens for those highly prized in Zabaito. It's something that we'll come back to you when we have more details, more information, we'll tell you. Oh, the international one is Mikal. Um, for many years, not because a server is of a certain community doesn't mean you can't change from one to the other, not exclusive. Especially with the new type of transfers, you can go there and back as you please. As you please. <laughs> reroll, we've mentioned reroll. Oh, we've discussed it this morning and... I've, I'm very passionate about it. I want to stop it for a very short while at least because reroll during a rush it changes a lot to the dynamic, especially with the size of the event that we're planning. But <laughs> generally, game design wise, if you do a reroll, it's not gonna work. But for the rest, fine. From my side, it is something that I would really like to stop for the first few weeks 
because event size it would make sense for you to be able to just pick the class that you need for this first event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it would incentivize you to create a new character, benefit from double XP and catch up, but you still do in game content as opposed to just continue progressing linear. We're just going to take a decision like this on the live without talking and thinking about it with the team. But the idea that we're going with is to stop it on the shop for a few weeks at least for the uh, after that it's going to come back of course but for the initial server rush it would be annoying for you to be able to go uh, start a rush and then after half an hour change your mind and change class last last and then we stop one last question and then we stop christmas island will be available on the new servers as expected animated the mobs have been reworked it's so cool and good looking christmas will be available yeah it will be available yes it will be available and after that what happens we'll see we will see <laughs> we can stop here so everything that we've presented here for the first part and the third part it will be arriving on the better on the seventh so keep an eye on that uh with the change log that will list absolutely every modification per item per uh, uh everything that yola has presented to you today so you'll be able to directly go and test them in the better and we will meet you on the third of December for the big release. Uh, please go and test them because this modification will touch highly important, profound things that have been there for a long time. Please come and test them because if you want a good rush, you need the information to find the good theory crafting, to find the good um, new ways of playing. So yeah, please do test the new stuff. So if, it, if they don't work, we want to know now during the beta and not during the server rush when the big teams are there, the influencers are there and everybody's rushing and then we find out that around the world is bugged, you can't progress. Cool. Globally, there were some really good uh, announce. I hope that we've met your um, your expectations. Don't hesitate to spam the team that you think you're part of, that you'd like. Uh, the spam, we love it, we spam. Boom, 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 boom. We love the spam, we love spam. We will see you on the 3rd of December for the rush. Thank you very much all for being here. See you later. Bye!